come to grips with is that the labs operate openly in Mexico and you're doing nothing about it. They get the pre precursor drugs from China and if you don't change your policies, we're going to have to take matters in our own hands. I want to work with you like we did with the country of Columbia dealing with their cocaine problem. I want to work with you to shut these labs down, but you're not helping. You're in denial. The product is primarily coming from your country, being produced in areas where you have no authority or control. And if you don't change this policy, you're going to require America to do things that I don't want to do, but we must do. Let's work together. If you choose not to work with me, I'm going to do everything in my power to use the laws of the United States to destroy these drug cartels and whatever is necessary to protect Americans from dying by the tens of thousands, I will do. Que él dice eh, que nos quieren ayudar o que me quieren ayudar. Yo contesto lo mismo. Nosotros los queremos ayudar. Yo los quiero ayudar. Pero vamos haciendo un análisis de la realidad. No se puede transformar una realidad que se niega o que no se conoce. Por eso es importante este, poner a debate este asunto y hacerlo público, que la vida pública sea cada vez más pública. Y nada de expertos y de especialistas y de que la política es asunto de los políticos. No, la política es asunto de todos. Y el pueblo es sabio. Nada más que se requiere de información, no de manipulación. Decir en primer lugar de manera muy breve que para México el tema del fentanilo ha sido una prioridad, de hecho es el objetivo principal o uno de los propósitos principales del entendimiento bicentenario entre la administración Biden y el gobierno del presidente López Obrador. Dice el senador Graham, republicano, que México no acepta, no participa y está en modo negación. Le voy a mandar copia de todo lo que se ha publicado, porque los esfuerzos de México en materia de fentanilo son los más importantes del mundo. No hay ningún otro país del mundo que esté haciendo tanto contra el fentanilo que se trafica hacia los Estados Unidos que México. Pero todo esto está documentado. Más de un año, inclusive, hemos estado varias veces en Washington, pero por lo que veo no ha tenido oportunidad de leerlo. Entonces, lo voy a hacer llegar. Eh, diría, si ustedes me lo permiten, en primer lugar, ¿qué es el fentanilo? Para quienes nos escuchan. ¿O por qué es tan importante? Fentanilo se sintetizó en el año 1960 por un gran químico de origen belga que se apellidaba Janssen. Es un analgésico muy poderoso. Se utilizó, fue aprobado por la FDA en el año 1968 y de 1968 que se aprobó hasta pasados los mediados de los 90, por ahí de 1996, Nunca fue tema porque estuvo en los quirófanos, en operaciones muy largas. Por ejemplo, imaginen ustedes las operaciones a corazón abierto, que pueden tardar siete, ocho, nueve horas. Para eso se usaba. O para dolores muy intensos de diferente tipo, sobre todo originados por el cáncer. Entonces, a partir de 96 y años sucesivos, hasta el 2013, 1996, 2013, se le dio autorización a varias farmacéuticas en los Estados Unidos para distribuir este analgésico en los Estados Unidos, en las farmacias. Con una receta iban ustedes y compraban ese analgésico. El más conocido, Oxycontin. ¿Qué provocó este uso? del fentanilo en fórmula de pastilla, que es la que ven ustedes ya en la televisión y toda esa pastillita color azul. Provocó una pandemia en Estados Unidos, porque es extremadamente adictivo. Es tan adictivo que es letal, porque pierdes el control de las dosis. 
aquella, aquella persona que prueba una pastilla, después quiere dos y así sucesivamente, hasta que entra en colapso. Es altamente adictivo. Por esa razón, de 1960 a 1996 nunca se utilizó fuera del sistema médico, hospitales, operaciones, quirófanos. Pero de 96 en adelante se dio ese permiso. Todo esto está condujo incluso a juicios muy famosos en los Estados Unidos. Entonces, se prohibió 2013, ¿por qué? Porque empezó a aumentar el número de muertes, pero extraordinariamente al grado de que para ya estas fechas es más importante las muertes por fentanilo en los Estados Unidos que quienes pierden la vida en accidentes automovilísticos, para que ustedes se den idea del tamaño del problema. Entonces, sí tenemos un problema muy serio, pero conviene tener claro que el origen, en el origen de este problema México no ha tenido absolutamente nada que ver. Primero que habría que decirle al senador. Nosotros estamos ayudando a Estados Unidos, no generando el problema. Hello, Senator Lindsey Graham here. Uh, yesterday, the president of Mexico asked me five questions. Mr. President, I'm going to give you the answer here just in a second. But the first thing I, do, I want to do is make a statement. I wish to work with you and your government to deal with the Mexican cartels that exist in your country that are producing fentanyl at an alarming rate, killing thousands of Americans, 70,000 last year from fentanyl poisoning alone. The problem I have with you, be honest with you, Mr. President, is that you deny there are areas of your country controlled by drug cartels. Uh, you are in denial. The map you see behind me, the red areas, are a State Department map telling Americans don't go to these areas because they're too dangerous, controlled by drug cartels. The Secretary of State, the, the Secretary of uh, Department of Homeland Security all agree with me that drug cartels operate in your country uh, freely and openly. I'd like to work with you to stop that practice. Uh, to the questions. Is fentanyl consumed in the United States, yes or no? Mr. President, fentanyl is consumed in the United States. 11,000 pounds of fentanyl was seized at the southern border this year, uh, fiscal year. Last year's 14,000 pounds. 11,000 pounds, Mr. President, is enough to kill two and a half billion people. Yes, it's consumed in the United States. Here's the problem. We need to work on that. But uh, two young people from a single family bought two Percocet tablets laced with fentanyl. They both died. An 18-month-old child died from exposure at an Airbnb from residual fentanyl. This is a very dangerous drug being put in other drugs, and Americans are buying it not knowing it. It's produced in your country, and drug cartels are operating openly in your country, poisoning the Americans. We need to work together to stop it. Who deals fentanyl in the United States? Or better yet, are there drug lords and cartels that deal fentanyl in the United States? Mr. President, uh, Mexican drug cartels are operating in our major cities, distributing fentanyl, and we're going after them. But I want to do more than go after uh, fentanyl dealers in America. Uh, I want to educate the public about the danger of d uh, drug usage in America. You're right to, to as insist we do that. But I want to work with you to shut down these labs. And the first problem we got to come to grips with is that the labs operate openly in Mexico, and you're doing nothing about it. They get the pre precursor drugs from China, and if you don't change your policies, we're going to have to take matters in our own hands. I want to work with you like we did with the country of Columbia dealing with their cocaine problem. I want to work with you to shut these labs down, but you're not helping. You're in denial. Are the people that deal fentanyl in the United States Mexican or American? Mr. President, the fentanyl distribution network in the United States involves Mexican drug cartels and others. The product is primarily coming from your country, being produced in areas where you have no authority or control. And if you don't change this policy, you're going to require America to do things that I don't want to do, but we must do. Can you buy a machine gun or high-powered weapon in a supermarket in the United States? Yes you or can't, no? Mr. President, you can't buy a weapon commercially unless the person has a firearms license. So that's the key. What programs do you have to support young people with addiction issues? What are you doing to help them? We're spending millions of dollars trying to educate people about the dangers of drugs, particularly fentanyl. People are buying amphetamines to study for a test. They find out it's laced with fentanyl too late and they're dead. It's the leading cause of death, fentanyl poisoning, from 18 to 45 year olds in America. Last year, 70,000 Americans died from fentanyl overdoses. A lot of times people have no idea they're taking fentanyl. 11,000 pounds was seized this year alone coming in from your country. Last year, there's 14,000 pounds. It's made in your country with a connection to China, and you're not doing much about it. Final thought, Mr. President. Let's work together. 
If you choose not to work with me, I'm going to do everything in my power to use the laws of the United States to destroy these drug cartels and whatever is necessary to protect the Americans from dying by the tens of thousands, I will do.